The only respite from this battering is found on a few sheltered beaches, favoured by king penguins and elephant seals. But any landfall is treacherous for a young killer whale. It's Delphine. She's in serious trouble. Her cries are already weak. She barely has the strength to lift her tail. She must refloat herself or die from dehydration. In her short lifetime, several crozet whales have perished this way. Perhaps it was the rough surf or curiosity over the penguins which tempted this adventurous female too close to the land. Whatever the reason, her family will not desert her. Those pitiful cries bring them racing to her side. Her mother, Lison, is much larger and risks her own life by coming in so close. Delphine must do more than cry. She has to help herself. Almost nose to nose, her mother encourages her. Lison raises her dorsal fin, showing Delphine what she must do. And slowly, Delphine arches her body. But the surf keeps pushing her in. She tries harder, hunching with all her strength. Lison wills her on, and gradually, caterpillar-like, Delphine shuffles forward. They can almost touch. Lison swings her own tail round to join her daughter, side by side, keeping her going. She's free. Delphine's free spirit has got her into trouble many times before. As a tiny calf, she was stranded and rescued by the French scientists. Since that day, the whole family have trusted divers unusually close. Scientists are not supposed to be anthropomorphic. Yet they can't help but agree that Delphine is easily the most impetuous, wayward and spirited member of this playful family. <coughs> Calling in a dialect that's unique to the Crozet whales, Lison gathers her family together and leads them off to investigate another bay. She spent over 40 years learning every nook and cranny of this coastline. She must pass this knowledge on to her family and leads them on a short cut through the seaweed. Delphine begins to lag behind. She can't help but be distracted by the gentle sway of the ribboning fronds. She's playing again. An underwater grotto beckons and she takes a wrong turn. gives the family contact call. There's no reply. Swimming faster to catch up, she finds herself in a thick bed of giant kelp. Delphine is well and truly lost in this maze. She cries for help. 
but is met by a wall of silence. For a young killer whale, whose world is normally full of the reassuring sounds of its family, this silence must be similar to being shut in the dark. Delphine cries again, repeating this specific distress call which will carry, even through the seaweed, for three miles or more. But a family were cruising at around ten miles an hour. They could easily be out of range. They turn as one, so they've heard something. Instinctively, Lison knows which of her charges is missing. They race towards Delphine's distress signal. For the second time in two short weeks, they're on a mission to rescue the most wayward member of their family. Lison relies on the fact that one of the many lessons she has taught her capricious daughter has stuck. When lost, stay still. Only if Delphine remains in one place can Lison track her cries to their source. After two long hours, they're reunited. Despite Delphine's habit of getting into trouble, she gets a welcome fit for a hero. These whales are extremely sociable. They'll use any excuse to party. Perhaps they rejoice because the danger of losing one of the family is always real. Only a few years ago, an adult female disappeared from the group in mysterious circumstances. As the family celebrate, Junior tugs at the seaweed. The same weed which so nearly trapped his young playmate. 